What's up, everybody? This is John from Coding Addict, and welcome to another JavaScript Nuggets video. And since in our last video, we covered how to set up a promise object. Now let's put that info to good use and build a three heading example, the one we set up a few videos ago. Only this time, instead of callbacks, we'll use the promises. And as far as the setup in the index.html, we have three headings with some classes that we're going to use in a second, as well as the button. And then the idea is that once we click on a button, I want the first heading to turn red in one second or two seconds or whatever. In my case, I'm going to go with one second. Then the second heading needs to turn blue in three seconds. And then the third one needs to turn green in two seconds after the second one. And again, the biggest gotcha here is that all of that needs to happen in sequence. And if you remember, we worked on this example a few videos ago, where essentially I showed you the call back help. And of course, once we know how we can work with promises, now we'll take a look how we can make our code cleaner and easier to read. And unlike the previous example, I'm purposely not selecting the headings here where I have the button and you'll see in a second why. And the setup is going to be following where again, we want to set up the event listener, of course, and we'll be listening for click events. So let's go with BTN and we're looking for add event listener. Let's say click here and let's go with our callback function. And just so I can see that my setup works, I'm going to go with log and I'll say hello. So now let me open up the console and then in the console, I should see the hello. If you do, then of course we're heading in the right direction. And then after that, I want to set up a function by the name of add color. So let's go here, function add color. And this function eventually is going to be looking for three arguments and we'll work on them in a second. For time being, let's just say add color and let's invoke this function here. So let's go with add color and we should see the add color in the console once we click on the button. And like I said, this function is going to be looking for three things. It's going to be looking for time. So in how long, then it's going to be looking for selector. So which heading and also what color we want to add. And of course, you can see my test values here. So class is our first, second and third. And then one second, three seconds and two seconds. And of course, the values are red, blue, and green. So first, let's set up the function where I'll name my parameters. So time, selector, and color. And from this function, eventually, I want to return a promise. But before I do that, I'll set up that query selector. So every time I'll invoke the function, I'll also go with const, and I'll set my element. And that one will be equal to document. And then, of course, we're looking for query selector, and then we'll pass that selector. So whichever class we decide, first, second, or third, or if you want to pass in another selector, of course, you can do that as well. And then I'm going to go with return. So from this function, we are returning a new promise. And if you remember, we passed in the callback function. And then inside of this callback function, we have two more arguments, resolve and reject. And here comes the magic where I'll say if the element exists. So if I have correctly selected the element, then we'll do one thing. We'll set up the timeout and then we'll fulfill the promise. If, however, there is an issue, then, of course, we'll reject it. And you're probably thinking, OK, but how is that going to work? Well, if you have correct class, then, of course, you have properly selected the element. If, however, you'll pass in some kind of selector that doesn't return element, you know that you'll get the null. And then, of course, you'll reject the promise. So I'll say here, if element, and of course, if you want, you can console log, but in my case, I won't. Just remember that if you cannot select anything with your selector, then of course, you'll get back null. So I'll say if element exists, then we want to go with set timeout. And then remember, we needed to pass in the callback function here as well. And then we need to set up the time, correct? And for that time, I'll use the time parameter that I'm passing in the add color. So here I set comma, and that is going to be equal to time. And then eventually inside of the set timeout, I'm going to go with element that I have selected, style and color. 
and I'll set it equal to the color that I'm passing in the add color function. And eventually we also need to resolve it. And in this case, we don't need to pass in the value. And you'll see in a second why. So I'll just save. And then right after that, I'm going to go with else. And if there's something wrong with my selector, then we're just going to go with reject. And we go with there is no such element. And then we just want to point out the selector. Therefore, I'll go with my quotation marks. And I'll say selector. So now, of course, we can start using the function. And as you can see here, I'm invoking it without any arguments. And as far as what are the arguments I want to pass in? Well, for the first one, I want to go with class first, then one second, and I'll have to pass in thousand because set timeout is looking for milliseconds. And lastly, the color is red. So in here, we just go with thousand, then we go with comma. And then what is the class? What is the selector? Well, that, of course, is dot and then first. And then lastly, we're looking for the color red. So therefore, the string value will be also red. And once I save and once I click on a button, check it out. Now, of course, my first heading turns red. Why? Well, because the selector is correct. Now, if I'll change this around, so I'll just remove the dot. Of course, now it doesn't return any elements. So we'll see in a console a rejection. Now, of course, we haven't set up the dot then or dot catch. That's why we have this mess in a console. And therefore, I'm going to go with then. So I'll invoke then. And then we're looking for the catch. And if you remember, in this case, since I'm passing in the value in the reject, if I want to access that value, well, then we'll pass in the callback function. I'll say error. And we'll simply console log the error. So let's go back over here. Let's say error. And now once I save with this incorrect selector, once we click, of course, now in a console, we have there is no such element. And once we're clear on the rejection, let's set up the proper selector. And in this case, the proper class name is first. And here comes the mind grenade. And the mind grenade is following that. Yes, once we pass in here, the callback function, we can access the value. That is correct. But in our case, since we're not passing any value in to resolve, this is not particularly useful. Now, what is useful is the fact that if you return another promise from this callback function here, then we can chain another dot then. So how is that going to look like? Well, we can go here with add color and let me set it up correctly. So we'll go with add color and then we want to pass in the second set of values. What are those? Well, that is in three seconds. So of course, we're going to be looking for 3000. Then as far as the selector, we're going to go with dot and second, of course, that's the class name. And then thirdly, what is the color value? And of course, that is going to be blue. So once I save, now we should see the first two headings get the correct colors. So once we click over here, notice first one is red. And then after three seconds, only then the second one turns blue as well. And then since this add color returns a promise. Now, of course, what we can do, go with another dot then, and we do the same thing, where in our callback function, we invoke the add color. And as far as last set of values, we're looking for two seconds, so 2000, then the class name is third, and the color I want to add is green. So let's save that one. And now, of course, once we click the button, our functionality is going to work as we expect. And as you're looking at it, you're like, okay, I understand. So if from this function, the callback function, we return another promise, we can keep on chaining dot dense. But since we're not passing any data, well, why do I need to call the resolve? And you might try to comment this out and then run it one more time. And what you'll notice is the fact that initial functionality works. So we still turn the first heading red, but after that we stop. And now let's think about it, why that happens. Well, in our function, we select the element, okay? Then we set up the timeout, we add the color, and then we resolve it. So what happens as far as our promise, it is still pending. Now I can console log and I can show you that that is really the case. 
But in order to save us some time, I won't do that. Just remember that always, always, whether you are returning a value or not, you need to either resolve the promise or reject it. So in this case, we're still in this if statement, and we're not resolving the promise. So at the end of the day, the promise that we have right now is still pending. And if the promise is still pending, then of course, we won't be executing whatever we have in that then. Now, another thing that I want to point out that as you're looking at it, you're like, okay, but what if I want to pass a value from the first one to second one to third one? So make it a more complicated scenario. And we can try it out where I'm going to add another parameter and I'll just say data. And now where we have the resolve, I'll pass in the data. Now, if you want, you can console log in any of them. But the way I'll set it up is here where I'll add that as a fourth argument to my first one. And I'll say over here, hello world. And now remember that when we resolve the promise in a callback function, we'll have access to that data. And in this case, I'm just going to call it data again. And now instead of hard coding that value, I'll just pass in the data. And I'll do the same thing over here, where I'll take the data out of my resolve in my callback. And then in here, let's just make it a bit more complicated. So I'll set up the curlies and I'll move that functionality here, first of all. And I also want to show you that, of course, if we console log, you'll see the hello world. So once I click, eventually in a console, I'll see the hello world. And notice how we nicely pass this from one function to the next one. And once that is clear, I actually want to remove it just because I want to talk about the promises versus callbacks. And I think it's going to be simpler. So let me remove this data, this data here as well. And I won't pass it in. And then we'll remove that hello world. And of course, I'll remove it here as well. And as you're looking at it, you're like, okay, well, this code is definitely cleaner than the one we have, of course, in a callback hell, where we were nesting. But what about this function? Essentially, there's quite a bit of work here in order to set everything up. And yes, you're correct. But we need to keep in mind two things. Effectively, if you are going to be setting up this function, you only have to do that one time. And after that, you can use it anywhere in your code. And second, like I mentioned at the beginning of the previous video, essentially, oftentimes, these functions will be provided for you. And the only thing you'll actually have to do is use those functions. At the end of the day, the beauty of the promises is the fact that we can write a synchronous code in a synchronous fashion, because you do have to agree with me that this code, the one that we have inside of the click handler is far easier to read than the one that we have inside of the callback L one. 